there, Chris here with another Airbrush Noob adventure. We are going to be painting scorpions, striking scorpions that is. And as you can see here, I already got one of the models. I've used them in a tutorial before on edge highlighting. Basically what these guys were given was a base coat of the old Bilus Green, which is really, really bright, bright green. And the intention was I was gonna hit them with a green wash or you know Agrax or shade, something along those lines. And shade them and then re-highlight them. But I was thinking, well, got the airbrush. These guys are sitting on my shelf. These guys are primarily one color, so it should be relatively straightforward to kind of just get them done. And I also have another box of these guys to put together, so I suppose I should get them up to some sort of standard. And so basically for that, I am going to give them a shading of swamp ground. Basically, I'm going to spray them from the underside, try and catch all those little shadows. Now, ideally, you don't really want the bases attached if you're going to do something like that, but this is not an ideal situation, so too bad. So first things first, slap on our glove, just so that we don't get paint all over ourselves. Oops, jeez Louise. <laughs> Yeah, turn your head and cough. That's actually kind of a running joke around here for anybody who's has never been in the studio before. What kind of silliness goes on with the rest of the crew? We're gonna be using this Badger Patriot 105. It's already cleaned and ready to go. See, it's nice and clean. Bit of a neat freak when it comes to these things because if you let them get gunked up and dirty, it just looks a mess. Just a mess. Uh, I am working at, what PSI am I working at? Good question. About 40 PSI. For some strange reason, I went down uh, a couple, like about uh, down to about 20 PSI, 25 PSI. Last time I was using this, the color just wasn't coming out as nicely as I like. And so it was just a huge pain. Pain, 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 pain. So, let's load up some color. Let's start spraying. Probably don't need that much. Bottle's already been given a good shake. And pretty much I am going to do the X-Art all over again. Just because I can. You know what, while I'm at it, I probably should just do, maybe I should just do the whole model in the green, in this dark green. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll just hit them uniformly with this dark green. It's kind of like a dark angel's green, this green color, which is all right. It suits the striking scorpions. Careful not to touch your model too much. They don't like it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to that. What would, I, what would I know what a model likes? And so basically, I am just going to let this camera roll while I'm working on this so you can kind of see my whole little process. For those of you who are not familiar with what kind of crap I do. Should I bother coloring those weapons? Ah, screw it. Yeah, I find with the 40 PSI, it's flowing a lot better. So, I don't know. It might be just the way I'm set up. I know a lot of you guys out there, you know, they were, you were taking, you're having an issue with what PSI I was running. And hey, you know, like, I'm always listening and I gave it a shot and I wasn't particularly fond of the results I was getting at the lower PSI because as some of you may have noticed from the last airbrush noob that it's pretty dark now. But it's okay. That's fine. You know, let's send him over here because we don't want to get him all jumbled up. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm finding the color flowing a lot better. So I don't know. I'm digging how easily it's coming out of the brush right now. 
And I have used this color before on some of Steve's models. And I don't really recall having trouble with it at the time, but I don't know. Kind of rambling on at the moment. Just trying to get all the nooks and crannies here. Kinds of stuff falling down from my desk. I don't know what's going on. It's a quiet Thursday night as I film this. In case some of you are wondering what's going on. I also posted a picture on my Facebook on you know what I've been working on. I think maybe that's what I'll do from now on with my Facebook. Because oftentimes, you know, it, I have you know a lot of family stuff on there. But I was thinking, you know, it's just for some of you guys who do kind of keep up with what I do in and around work and what have you. I think I will start posting on a regular basis. Um, you know, the kind of tutorials for people to expect to be coming out. So I think that's what I'll do from now on. Just, oops, for giggles. Now, I used to do kind of a little segment on the way of the brush on, you know, kind of like what I was working on and what have you. But as we got into all the emails, and of course, you know, everybody's sending emails all the time. Oh, this is why I always have a handle on the paint. I can feel my hand cramp and hold it really in basis. People sending emails, which is great, by the way. But, you know, it doesn't give a lot of time for a lot of other stuff, you know? Which is fine. Yeah. Am I running out? No. Yeah, see, the color's still flowing good. And, I'm not saying whoever told me to go up to a, or go down to a lower PSI was giving me bad advice because I did like at the lower PSI I did like how it flowed out of the brush when you know concerned with the, the smaller kind of stuff, right? But at this higher PSI, especially with this brush, you know, uh, laying some base color down, I don't think you can really beat it working at a 40 PSI here, because I am just slapping this color onto the model. It is getting slapped, like, quickly. Like, I don't, maybe I should zoom in a bit with the camera, but this color is, like, it's on the model already. It's the last did this model come painted like this? And I'll have to say, no. I turned the PSI up on my airbrush and I slapped it onto the model. And I was off to the races. I use that expression a lot, right? Eh? Off to the races. Like what races are we going to? I don't know. But apparently we're off to them. We're off to them. You know what, maybe I will zoom in just a little bit so you guys can kind of see what I'm up to here. Do -do 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 -do. Slap a little bit more paint into the brush. Let's zoom in just a bit. A bit more for everybody. Just a bit more so you guys can see. It's a nice bright green. You can kind of see, when I initially laid this color out too, I was using this Citadel uh, spray gun. For it and uh, you know, it didn't do a bad job or anything, it just you know, you can't get the kind of, kind of cover you can with a regular kind of airbrush, especially one that, that you can adjust your, your pressures, your PSI. Let's, let's use the correct terms here, Chris. The PSI, everybody's all about having the right PSI. What PSI are you spraying at? Don't know. Whatever PSI it happens to come out at. Some paints. Because you know, like, I imagine when you start getting into the, um, um, 
Oh. Crap, I can't think of the damn paint. Not alcohol based, it is solvent based. There we go. When you start getting into the solvent based paint, I imagine that stuff really gums up an airbrush. I would imagine something like, you know, like, like testers of acrylic, or not acrylic, but enamel, like enamel based paint. I imagine that just, just destroys the airbrush. Give me a little spray with it. Alright, there we go. <laughs> See, my painting cup now has a spot of Anyway. See how that yeah, 40 kiss on Look at that, how fast I'm, I'm laying this color down. And it's going on nice and smooth. I'm not going too heavily. I don't have the, uh, the hammer pulled back very far. As I do prefer to build up color slowly but surely on a model. Hence, you probably can see that I don't you know, just hit it with a whack ton of paint. I'm trying to be quite controlled. With my paint, the paint flow. Of course, it's with all aspects. Oh, crap, out of paint. That's why there's no paint coming out. <laughs> okay, a couple more drops. That should, uh, that should do it. There's really not that much left on this guy. That actually kind of looks cool, kind of cool like that, eh? Let's go the green. See, that was initially my intention to do, but got sidetracked. So, anyway. Everybody's all about the PSI. What PSI are you shooting at? And I imagine... You know, it's kind of like, you know, when you regular paint brushes and everybody goes, well, what kind of brushes are you using? Oh, you must be some sort of pro to work with that kind of brush. And you know what? The brush does not make the artist. I know you guys have heard me say that more than once. There we go. So now they're not as vibrant green as before, but you know what? That's okay. So let's start flushing. Of course, you know what? I'm going to record all this flushing because I know some of you out there always get a kick out of the process in which I go through to flush this thing out. And in fact, we should start a timer at the bottom of the screen for how long it takes to flush this thing. And so basically I fill it up with water and then I, I empty out there. And then really quickly here, I fill it up with some little bit more water. And just grab a little bit more. All the spray container here. I just work the hammer back and forth as I there we go. And there we go. And I take my little trusty towel and then wipe the excess out of the pot like so then really quickly here slap it in a little bit more water and you can still see there's green you can see it's kind of murky there so we flush it again flush it again flush it again flush it again and see it could probably take another color right now but I'm a bit of a neat freak, and so I grab my Windex, just give them a couple of squirts, trying to avoid hitting my models with Windex. So just two little quick squirts in there. Oftentimes I'll pull the hammer, oops, yeah, I just sprayed my models with Windex. Did you see that? So a little bit, bloop, drips out, okay. And work the hammer back and forth as I spray. Of course, you should always have a respirator on, of course. But I don't because I'm talking to you and I'm usually not that concerned with my health anyway. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You should always be concerned with health. So see, it's pretty clear. And just a quick little blush. And we are ready for another color. So, there we are. See, clean bowl, nice and ready to go again. So, initially, I was just simply going to hit them with this pestilence flesh. But now, I'm not so sure I want to do that. I should do the exerc first. Just so we can kind of see. 
Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I should do them with a... Or maybe I should do them with the Pestilence Flesh and then maybe a bit of a bone color at the very top or maybe a light yellow. No. This is a really kind of pale green. Swamp ground, right? Swamp ground. And I'd rather go more zenithal because I'm just going to do these guys like a zenithal style. And so this, I mean, I guess I could mix the two colors, right? I could always mix the colors. Or we can kind of go for the in between. Does Minotaur make an in between? Fresh grass? No. Gremlin green? The same to me. What's this? Envy green. That's too bright. Let's go with. Maybe this fresh grass. Ooh, boring green. Boring green? Boring green. No, that's too light. Boring green. Uh, orc complexion. Orc complexion's not bad. You know what? I think we are going to have to just say screw it and mix the paint. Let's just mix the paint. So, mixing the paint in the paint pot. Now, I'm pretty sure I've done a tip on this somewhere on the internet. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, screw it. I'm just filling it up to about that far. And hopefully this is enough to do, to do the entire group. So basically, when I mix, so I pour the two things of paint in there, and then we're gonna back feed the air. Bubbling around. Kind of a hard whistle there too. Hopefully none of you guys had your speakers turned up too loud. <laughs> and if you did, well, too bad. Okay. But bubbles, toil and trouble. How's that look? Eh, she doesn't look too bad. Let's see how it looks on the Scorpion, on the Exarch. So, we're gonna do a Zenithal style. So basically we're going to hit them at a 45 degree angle, like so, and just work our way around. Actually, I kind of dig that. It's a little bit paler than I was intending, but I don't mind. I don't mind this at all. I don't mind that at all one bit. I just got to get this thigh though. That's the one thing about Zenithal that always kind of bugs me is that like if you follow it technically, you know, like the light is only coming down at a certain specific angle. I kind of dig that. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted because I'm kind of digging how that looks. Um, maybe I'll take a quick still when I'm done just to show you guys how it looks. But I'm not going to lie, kids. I dig it. You know what? I probably didn't make enough, so I think I'm going to quickly do this and just lay this color out. So, really quickly, I'm kind of just going only at a 45 degree angle to the model. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Oop. Try not to be overzealous with it. Probably only need to hit them two angles, right? No, I guess you have to make them all four. You know what? I am digging that color. It's not quite what I wanted initially, but you know what? I can't complain the kind of result I'm getting here. It's really subdued, and with the rest of my army, it actually might look pretty cool because my bright red of my jet bikes and everything, you know, and this kind of pale green. And I mean, like, if I really want to bring this back to a vibrant kind of green, I can always just, you know, hit it with a wash or something. I just gotta get the top of this guy again. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna take a, a still for you guys 
post it at the end of this video just so you guys can kind of see how this how this looked because I kind of dig it. I'm trying to get these front ends here. This sword is really in the way, and, it, and that's another one of those things when you're airbrushing. And you know, I don't know, I'm rambling. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm falling in love with this color here. It's a real kind of pale army green color, but like it's kind of cool. I kind of like it. It's different. I don't know if I've seen many scorpions done in a kind of an army green. And so, oh look at that! I did have enough to do these guys. Look at that! Look at that! I just gotta see who's not up to par here. Same intensity. Yeah, dang it. I'm digging it. I'm sorry guys, but I'm digging it. I'm usually not one for you know gushing over models, but I am kind of digging how that looks. Man, man. So again, my flushing process for the pot up with water. And I dump here. Let's zoom out. Zoom out a bit. And then I dump it into my water container. This is usually my rinse uh, water for brushes and stuff. But I'm sure you guys already knew that. Let's zoom just really quickly here. Just flush it some more. <sighs> the reason for dumping it before, like instead of just pouring water in and then just spraying it out. It's just in case you get some ghibli gook in there when you're mixing or you know as the paint settles or even as the paint you can see how it, it's already starting to dry at the edges here sometimes that can fall and when you start spraying you can end up clogging your brush prematurely because there's dried bits going through and trying to get out right so that's the whole point of flushing it like that it's just score uh, uh, grabbing some water and you can see it's already still Pretty murky, but it's not as strong a pigment as when it was when it was, you know, obviously still paint, right? Because we flushed this a few times. And you can't see to the bottom because it's kind of sudsy, but anyway. And so, yeah, that's often my process for cleaning. And so far it's worked because I've had this brush for quite a while. This was given to us at Mini Wargaming from uh, Kenneth Badger. And you know, he was kind enough to give us one, and we are very fortunate that he is such a generous fella. And I have absolutely enjoyed this brush. I haven't even used, I have a chrome as well, and I've barely used that one. I think in a couple airbrush noobs I've used it, but like barely, because for the most part, for my needs, you can still see it's kind of murky there. For the most part, you know, this brush does pretty much everything I needed to do. I'm not doing fine line work or anything like that. You know, I'm not, you know, airbrushing an entire model, you know, most of the time. Okay, so let's see, it's mostly clean. Time for some Windex. And yeah, this, this brush has basically been doing just everything I needed to do, which is good. Real quick clear, just draw the hammer back, don't hit the plunger. Just try, oh, always do that. And then just spray the window. So, easing the hammer back and forth as I do so, just to work out any case there are, any other little uh, things of uh, paint or what have you in there. And again, Give it a quick wipe. Give it some water. Looks pretty clean to me. Give it a flush. Everything sounds good. After a while too, you get used to the sound it'll make once it's like clean and what have you. And oh yeah, see the bowl looking nice and clean. Give it a shot of water and the water is nice and clear.
kill, kill, kill. Okay, so on to our final color, as I'm only gonna hit these guys with one color. Because if need be, once I get to like, you know, the actual detailing of these guys, I can always give them a quick dry brush or what have you. So, now we're gonna work with that pure color, it's nice and bright. You can see it's already drastically different from the two. And this first uh, mixture that went onto the model, like it, it already, is, it doesn't look too visible here, but it is, but with this color, this should become very apparent. So now we are spraying directly, as you can see the model here, we're spraying directly at the top to get that nice little xenophil effect on the model. It's not gonna cover the entire model. It's only meant to just provide that top, top highlight. And I'm gonna fudge it a bit. I'm gonna hit some other areas that probably wouldn't get light, but screw it. Screw it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So let's put him there. Let's grab another scorpion. Yeah, see if I always want to just come in and, and hit him with another color or uh, like brighten up those edges, you know, you're free to do that. Trying to maintain a nice high angle here. See again, because that sword gets in the way, it doesn't get into any of this detail of the knee, and I don't like that. So I'm going to cheat a little bit because I do want those knees covered. <clears throat> yeah, it's a little pale, but I dig it. I dig it. I like it. Gives them a different feeling. Oops. Knocking the models all over the place now. Getting all excited. Getting all excited. Sorry, I'm not talking. I am concentrating. <laughs> As you would expect from somebody who's still playing around with the airbrush, I still do, you know, like I've, I've gotten a fair amount of experience on this thing, but I still consider myself a noob at this. And so I still will consider a new input as I learn this process. But that is as far as I'm gonna to go today with that because that's, the rest of that is all gonna be brushwork. But that squad is almost ready to go. I mean, all I have to do is pick the weapons out and I can pick those out and, geez, maybe I'll go with a classic and go with gold weapons. And yeah. Now I do have some other models that do need to be airbrushed. Um, I have some second edition Howling Banshees, or third edition. The one where they changed their helmets so they had more angles, like to the helmet. They didn't have a nice uh, original edition of uh, Eldar, you know, Banshees. But I have those Banshees. And I think about working on them next. I also have Fire Dragons I can do. First edition Fire Dragons. I have a lot of guardians. I don't know, what do you guys think I should be working on next? Because these scorpions here, you know, like I said, they're pretty much brush work now. And, you know, not gonna be airbrushed the rest of the way. But, what should I call it when I've airbrushed a 
a part of the model and then go to brush on the same model, right? Because I mean, like my Lynx is kind of getting to that point too. And I don't want to call it airbrush new because, you know, I'm not airbrushing at all. Airbrush new, I'm airbrushing stuff. So what do I call it? Oops, just sprayed myself in the face. No, I'm just kidding, I didn't. <laughs> what should I call it though? When I continue work on them, because I, I did it for Airbrush Noob, where I did that. But what should I call it? When I continue work on a unit. Or should I just say, ah, finishing scorpion. That's kind of lame though. Gotta have some flair to it, right? Some flair. It's always about the flair. Oh, here's the thing. Okay. So. <clears throat> now that I'm done painting, okay, and I'm sure I've, I've done videos on this before, but when I'm done painting with this brush, I always pull the pin when I'm done. I always re just quickly chuck the, the chuck back on, and then really quickly here, and you can see it already. See, see this paint flowing? Because I pulled that needle out, and so I'll squeeze a little bit of water in there, and look, there's there's paint in there, and so I'll just. Really quick for here, spray it through, and then I'll grab some more water. And often I'll do this as I'm chucking water in. Now, I'd imagine it's just, whoops, I almost sent everything flying everywhere. I imagine it's probably not the most ideal way to do that, as water can travel back up this way, but you know. And I haven't, I haven't lubed up the needle in a while, which is, you know, shame on Chris. Now, sometimes I will Windex the needle, but the needle is pretty clean. And when you run it through the, the cloth a few times, you can feel, you can feel that it's just passing really cleanly. Like there's nothing grabbing. If you get that sensation that there's grabbing, then that means there's something on the metal. But if it just passes and glides, then this needle should be clean. And then once I'm done, I just quickly undo a little chuck there. Carefully, without poking the end of the needle. Can I see that? Jeez, what am I doing here? There we go. Got to get that back in place. There we go. Put my needle back into place. Tighten down the chuck. Quick test, squeeze some water in there, and there is a little bit of murkiness, which means something's in there, but that's okay. Yeah, I should really should, yeah, now it's clean. Yeah, it's perfectly clean now. And so that's really, that's it for my kind of cleaning, and I'll probably show it again because, you know, I'm sure not everybody watches each of these videos. I know some of you dedicated folks watch these, but, yeah, that's it. And then when I put it in, back in its holder, I put the little plastic cap back on top. It does kind of trap up some of the moisture, but you know what? I'm using this every other day, and so moisture really doesn't get a chance to, you know, kind of corrode. But I mean, these things are nickel plated, stainless steel. And so I really haven't had an issue with rusting. And I've been using this pretty, pretty faithfully. I don't even know how long I've been using this for. It's gotta be going on a year. I've been using this and so if anybody asks Chris would recommend one of these brushes as long as you take care of it <laughs> take care of your brushes they'll take care of you so I'm gonna take off now and I am gonna show you guys what this looks like up close and personal with a photo or two oh I got some overspray on my table here Oh, God. now I'll clean it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> oh.